Welcome friends, here we are again with another show of Connected. This is your bilingual space and we are going to use it to connect with friends from all over the world. I want to remind you that you don't only see us through our Abby Ayala channel, but also through Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. topic uh, combines a little bit of passion, determination with music. I want to tell you about every time we decide to uh, we decide what we want for our lives. We decide to make a dream. We decide to make a dream come true. So what is the next step? We always try to find the ways, uh, we have to, we try to prepare ourselves. Also, we try to find people that are kind of doing the same thing so maybe we can learn from them or maybe we can get help from them, right? And that's how we're going to open our, our ways in life. But um, what happens when our purpose in life and our own dream is to help others? Right? Because sometimes you can be, uh, it's easier for one to help yourself, but how about helping others? Today we're gonna talk about that, and our guest is gonna tell us how has, he, how has he been doing it. He's gonna contact us from Norway, and he's gonna tell us about the project that he has. He works with uh, musicians, young musicians, that uh, need some help and most, moreover need support. So he create a project, he designed a project where, we help, where he helps people, and not only people, but musicians, to get better on their profession. How does he do that? He's gonna be here in the next uh, session and he's gonna tell us about it. Don't go anywhere, stay connected. I'll be right back with our guest all the way from Norway. Welcome back connected people and as promised, I am already connected with our friend that is gonna tell us about the topic of today, which is uh, being able to help others to reach their own dreams. His name is Ivar Fjordheim and he is talking to us all the way from Norway. Ivar, so nice to have you on the show today. Thank you for the time you're spending with us. I wanna go ahead with the first question and I want you to tell us about the beginning of this project. Where did it all start? Who had the idea? And how things got to place? Welcome to Connected. Thank you. Well, it all started back in uh, 2010. Um, I was asked to join a brass ensemble to go to the Baroque Festival in Santa Cruz area. And uh, mm -hmm. we played concerts in Santa Cruz and also in the in a few Chiquitano places. And uh, we also went to Plantres Mill to listen to the orchestra in the school there. And uh, when I came back home to Norway, uh, me and my wife, we discussed this and then we got the idea. Why don't we try to collect money and go there to help financially and also to teach the children. So two years later, we went to uh, Santa Cruz and uh, the organization C-Core, they asked us to go to Santiago de Chiquitos. And uh, we didn't know anything about that place, but uh, we went there, found the music school, found students, started teaching. I, I was teaching um, drums, percussion, and my wife, Irene, she is a trumpet teacher. So we stayed there for three months, and it was a fantastic place. You should all go once. So, um, I see. yeah, and, and then um, 
that, do you want me to tell more? Yeah. And uh, I were, you were tell me a little bit. Um, so s as as we saw uh, of your background, you are a player on the symphony orchestra, correct? There in Stavanger. And uh, yep. so I want to kind of know because really my interest is to I kind of have you as an example and inspire others to do the great job that you do. So I wanted to know you were sent to Bolivia. How did that connection happen? How did you and your wife got invited at the first time to actually come to Bolivia? How come did that happen? Well, the first time I was just asked to join this this orchestra because this uh, brass ensemble they were invited to to play in the festival and uh, I was asked to join them so that's was just a coincidence that it was Bolivia. I see, right? And uh, um, you were you were asked, but I believe, and of course there are so many others musicians in Stavanger, but you were yeah. asked to go to go to Bolivia. I want to know why. Well, <laughs> actually, just because the, the brass ensemble they needed a percussion player, and uh, I knew quite a lot of those members, so it was natural that they asked me. And uh, I am a sporty right. guy, so I said, yes, I would love to do it. And uh, and I never, have, I've never regretted this. Bolivia is a fantastic country with fantastic people and yeah. I am sure that that's exactly why you, because you have that spirit and that's exactly what I look on people when I try to, you know, to just inspire them because everything else, everything that develops after these type of uh, decisions, it's what makes the difference. So you yep. have like a, a spiritual, a spirit, uh, adventure spirit. So you decided to come all the way here. Okay, so then you went back to home with your wife and you guys decided to uh, do something about it. Now, how do you make the project uh, work financially in order like to know which steps we should go if somebody would like to do the same in the case? What we did was, um Together with the, my symphony orchestra here, uh, we decided to do um, annual uh, charity concerts. And uh, lots of uh, local artists, they joined this concert for free. So all the money we got, we could give to the project in Bolivia. And uh, we also have um, all the musicians in the orchestra, They uh, give monthly money to, to uh, the project and there are people in in town here that uh, give us money so so we collect money all the time and uh, we send it to um, yeah now we send it to mostly to Santiago de Chiquitos because that's uh, that's the place we fell in love with and uh, that's why we go there every year. I see. So, um, and on the project, do you, I mean, you guys collect the money and send it here for them to continue their studies? Or is it really that you guys are kind of bring a, a student or you pull some students all the way to Norway to improve their, their studies? How does the project, uh, what does the project offer? Yeah, when it, when it started, it was, uh, the idea was to, collect money to um, to give to um, the musicians, the music schools in uh, Santiago and in Santa Cruz. But then we also uh -huh. found, we, we met with lots of nice young people who were very eager to learn more. And we have also found out and also seen that the, some people think it's very difficult to find good teachers with and Without a good teacher, it's difficult to uh, improve. So um, that's why we also invited, we have invited uh, a flute player, Cecilia Rospigliosi. She is now here for the, her third year at the university. And our idea was then, 
is then that she will study here and become a good um, player and a good teacher and then to go back to um, Santa Cruz where she comes from to teach young children um, because that's uh, if you want to if you want to give the children good possibilities with a with a musical instrument you need an instrument of course but you also need a good teacher oh that's great so really the project goes beyond right you are trying to right now uh, making the already musicians to become better and then you send them back here so they can teach new generations and talking about yeah. music and um here you were saying i mean i will ask you to educate me or educate us a little bit because you were saying here that you uh, uh learn uh with people from san jose de chiquitos and there you uh play on the symphony right so how does these two uh, uh how do i say how do these two uh relate is there any is it the same st music style or it's just uh, that you, they go there to improve their skills and they're able to play any type of genre or any type of music or how in, in which genre is this is this uh, is your project alive uh, sorry I now I didn't quite understand what could you okay. could you repeat yes of course what I'm trying to say is, um, in San Jose de Chiquitos, what type yeah. of music do they play there? What kind of, of like, instruments or music or genre yeah. are the kids teach here? In um, when we came to Santiago de Chiquitos, it was uh, amazing because uh, the first rehearsal we listened to, then they played baroque music. From the, with strings and choir, um, you have in Bolivia. You have there are lots of pieces they have found uh, from the Baroque period, and uh, they were playing that kind of music, and that's that's the kind of music we we listened to, and we met also in Plantres Mill, in San Jose, uh, Santa Ana, all those places. Um, Nowadays, they still do that kind of music, but uh, they also do uh, more popular music. But uh, I'm very glad to hear that they keep the, the traditions alive right. concerning this Baroque music. So it's uh, fantastic, right. and they play, and then they also play. Then this uh, the the music school orchestra and choir in Santiago they are really clever and they take part in this baroque uh, this international music festival that happens every second year in in Santa Cruz so it's uh, it's amazing it's fantastic and when we see that we want to help them more with, with teaching and giving them the opportunity to have good teachers and to have good instruments so right so actually you were sent here and you end up getting inspired by it that's and I'm sure that after they have received the, uh, the, the help and were able to realize that they could do something else or being heard somewhere else I'm sure they also got inspired themselves um, moving on what would you, based on your experience, I would like you to tell me, what would you advise to the new uh, musicians that are maybe in different genres or maybe are coming also from Santa Cruz, but what would you, um, what would you advise to beginner musicians in order to help them pursue their dream or their goal on becoming better or, or maybe traveling somewhere else? I'll do it again. That's okay. Um, if I meet uh, or when I meet young people that want to play an instrument, um, there are several things that 
to me is important, but of course they need an instrument, but uh, they need a good teacher who can inspire them um, and then let them, like you say in English, in English it's, it's called to play an instrument and also to play football, to play, and that's, it's important in the beginning that they enjoy it, that they can play with the instrument and uh, but still they need a teacher so that they, they are on the right path from the beginning and then they also need uh, someone to play with it's quite uh, boring to to be on your own and so to play in a group to play in a, in a band in an orchestra it's very important and um, when I hear or see the uh, young young um, girls and boys in the or teenagers I I see that now in in Santa Cruz and also probably in other areas they are very eager to to um, build new orchestras choirs where the younger generation can um, take part and build up the, the music uh, uh, how do you say it to to um, increase the number of places where you can join and play your instrument um, and some some of the people in the 20s are some sometimes a bit frustrated because they don't have the teachers that they would like to have and uh, it's too expensive to go abroad so then they have to try to learn themselves and uh, it's very difficult so so i hope that people like this cecilia this bolivian student that is here now that more people like her get the opportunity to to meet good teachers they don't have of right. course they can come to, they can come to Norway but there are lots of places where they can find uh, find good teachers probably also in Bolivia but uh, but uh, the, as far as I have understood it's more difficult to find find good teachers right. there so so probably the work that like relies on your side it's kind of like you're planting to see you're planting the seeds making these young musicians great teachers so they can pass uh, pass on right their knowledge to new yeah, musicians yeah. and that way uh, find a way to not lose or not not have uh, the Baroque music and all that um, on the past, correct? Just to maintain it alive and and, yeah, yeah. and still vibrant. Yeah, that's right. That's um, that would be fantastic if it can. I think I think it will survive uh, and it will be alive for long, long time. But uh, you need players who can take care of that, and um, and there are lots of them who wants to if they if they get the opportunity and get the the right tools to do it. Correct. That's a really great job that you do, Eivar, and I am very happy to, happy to uh, get to meet you today. We're going to go to a really fast cut, and when we come back, we're going to have the last question for you. Don't go anywhere, everyone. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and we are still here with our guest, Eivar Fjordin. He's talking to us all the way from Stavangen, uh, Norway. And uh, Eva, I want to do the last question and I really want you to think about uh, and get inspired from all of the students that you have had so far. Um, what would be uh, like a most successful story that you can that you can tell us that it was possible to be uh, lived or to come alive because of your project? Uh, uh, of, of your experience, what would you say or which story do you recollect that is uh, probably the most, um, not successful only, but also inspirational? Well, as there are several, but 
biggest one is, is as I said, as I said with um, this girl, that we met her in Planters Mill many years ago, and she was clever. She played in the orchestra there, and then uh, we found we wanted to invite her for a week uh, in a summer camp in Norway, and she came back next year as well. And then we managed to to organize. Uh, a full-time bachelor study in uh, at the university here. That's a fantastic story, and it, hopefully this story ends with her coming back to Santa Cruz to teach, to be a teacher like the teacher she wanted to have when she was a kid. So that's a fantastic story, yeah. I think. And but also, also uh, when we go to Santiago de Chiquitos every year and we see the progress they make and we see the happiness and uh, and uh, the importance of this village this music school there are now lots of children there and they don't have enough instruments for all of them and that inspires us to to do more to help them to go back and to help them financing instruments and teachers salaries and things like that so yeah it's fantastic right it's really a, a beautiful work that you and your wife do i wish she was here with us i didn't know she was also a part of the project but i really want to thank you both for the best for the this beautiful work and also um I had the feeling that every time you guys come to Bolivia you have a great time and I think that's really great and I'm sure we're all here very thankful for not only um, your work but for the musicians that you guys sent back to us, right? So we can continue to uh, preserve and maintain our culture alive. Uh, yep. Ivar, Ivar, I'm gonna leave you um, a moment so you can say a hi to the people in Bolivia. And after that, I hope when you're in Bolivia, maybe we can meet. And I want to thank you again for being on the show. Yeah, thank you. And um, yeah, hello to everyone in Bolivia. In one week from now, we will be back, actually. In Santa Cruz, in one week from now. It will be fantastic. So then we will stay in Santa Cruz, in Santiago de Chiquitos, and we uh, we are a group this time, so we will play concerts in these places, and we will also go to Uyuni. So maybe we will play on Salar. Wow, that's great! That is really, really great. I just came back from the Salar myself a week ago, and it's really a beautiful place. Ivar, thank you so much for being on the show today. And I'm going to ask you if I can connect with one of your students that went to Nora and come back and maybe I can do an interview to them too. All right. Thank you so much yeah. for being here. And people, stay connected. I'll be right back. So everything we heard, there is definitely one thing that never changes. It's that in order to reach an object or your objective in life, there is a lot of hard work involved, whether you are in one position or the other. For instance, for Avar, in order for him to make this happen, they have to do a lot of other uh, fundraisings or a lot of other concerts in order to make the money so they can, so they can actually move to helping here in Bolivia and to the musicians here in Bolivia. Now, on the other hand, if you are one of the musicians, you also have a, a, not a lot, but really hard work to do in order to keep yourself determined, in order to keep yourself always practicing and making yourself better. It's very important to always be uh, connecting with others, right? So, so you can put yourself in a place where you can find the right person or the right organization that is gonna help you pursue your dreams. And that's the, the, thought, the thought that I wanna leave you today. Never think that you're doing too much. There's always something more you can do and there is always, you can always become better in whatever you're doing. In this case, just to having the vision of not only say, okay, I'm gonna help you with a guitar, but also say, I'm gonna help you be 
great so you can teach others. That is something that, it's a chain that will never stop. People teaching others, teaching others, that's the way we're going to maintain our culture and maintain um, this beautiful love that people have for music. So if you have no anybody that uh, is doing a difference or it has a beautiful project that should be known by the world, please send me an email. Again, my email address is conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. Do not hesitate, just send me an email. I'll be glad to connect with you. I will see you in seven days and that's all for today. Goodbye.